Take charge of your sports career now. Listen to Jill's latest episode where she uncovers how non-compete agreements in coaches' contracts might be violating the new FTC rule. Don't wait until it's too late. Listen to this episode now. Welcome to Representation Without Taxation with Jill McBride Baxter, a veteran sports law attorney for the past 30 years and certified NFLPA contract advisor. I'm about three things, protection, advocacy, and trust. Not only is Jill an attorney, she's the daughter of a college football coach and the wife of a college football coach, and she knows all of the issues from all angles. This is Representation Without Taxation, a -a one-of-a-kind show featuring critically relevant material for contract employees in sports. On April 23rd, one of the most significant rules that will impact this country is a rule that the Federal Trade Commission voted on and finalized, which prohibits employers from enforcing non-compete agreements against workers. So the the commission, the FTC, the Federal Trade Commission, determined that non-competes are an unfair method of competition, and therefore they violate the Section 5 of the Federal Trade Commission Act. So what does the final rule do? The final rule actually prohibits employers from entering into new non-compete agreements with workers on or after the effective date. So when is the effective date? Well, the effective date is actually going to be 120 days after the publication in the Federal Register. So if it were to be exactly 120 days from April 23rd, it would be in August. So how does that affect coaches' contracts? In a lot of coaches' contracts, there are clauses that don't allow a coach, number one, like to go and coach at another university in that conference. They also might tie a, um, an amount that somebody has to pay in order to go to leave the job and go work for another university in the same conference where you compete. That would be an example of a non-compete clause that under this new rule would not be allowed. Another thing that's happening in many of the coaches' contracts is what I call, really, they call them liquidated damage provisions, but they actually act as a non-compete agreement, meaning they say something like, if you leave early, you are going to have to pay a certain amount. Depending on how the language is written in your specific contract, will depend on whether or not it is what I call almost a de facto non-compete agreement. The new rule has specific uh, non-compete language, what is considered a non-compete. And you will need a lawyer to look at your um, agreement to determine whether or not the language in your current contract actually violates this new um, FTC rule. So what does the rule also Uh, prohibit. The rule also prohibits employers from enforcing existing non um, non non-competes with workers other than senior executives. Then they give you a definition of what a senior executive is. So a senior executive is someone who makes over 151 thousand dollars a year and also has policy making decisions well 
I'm here to tell you that a, an assistant coach for sure doesn't make policy making decisions at a university, nor does actually a head football coach. So where this is going to get really interesting is when there's huge buyouts in these um, coaches contracts, um, particularly for head coaches, whether or not they are going to be classified as a senior executive. I don't think they are because they don't make policy making decisions at the university. They might for the football program, but not for the university. Um, they actually have to follow the policies created by the university or the NFL team or um, whoever their employer is. Certainly for assistant coaches, they are not going to be um, senior executives. So what does it require that your employer do? Okay, the rule actually requires that employers have to notify workers whose non-competes are no longer enforceable. And they also have to tell them that these particular non-competes are no longer in, in effect and will not be enforced. The FTC actually has provided model language for the employers to use to notify the employees that in fact, those non-competes are no longer um, enforceable. So just so every, to be very clear, you really need to have someone review your contract to determine whether your non-compete or buyout in your contract violates this FTC rule. And you have to also be aware that this FTC rule does not go into effect for 120 20 days, but it is going to rescind contracts that have been um, put in place, I think in the last six months and any current employee, any current employee, those will no longer be enforceable. So what I want to tell coaches and and media, there are lots of media contracts out there that don't allow you to go to another station within like, let's say a hundred miles from your, um, your current station. And those are pretty classic non-competes because they're geographic and lo location. And those will no longer be, um, be enforceable either. So if you're in the media, um, it is going to be much easier for a person in sports media, for sure, to change jobs without any kind of um, backlash or people preventing you from going to another station. There is also another situation where I've seen in a lot of the NFL contracts, which this has been a practice that's been going on for, for many, many years, where the owner or the GM or the head coach doesn't allow an assistant coach to go interview somewhere else. And based on the language in your contract, that also would be what I call a non-compete, meaning they're preventing you from going to another employer. They're even preventing you from interviewing. So those kinds of situations will not be, I'm of the opinion that they will not be allowed um, under this new FTC rule. As I said, the rule will not be going into effect for 120 days. And another caveat is I'm sure it's going to get challenged by, um, and I think it's already been challenged by um, people like in, you know, probably big employers will not like this change and they will be challenge, challenging this uh, rule, I'm sure, immediately, which will probably just delay when this rule actually goes into effect. So uh, I really hope that you um, enjoyed this 
explanation of what's going on. It's an earth shattering rule and it's a great thing for, for workers and, and people in sports who have been continuously um, prevented from easily going and working other places without having to pay their employers. So um, I hope you enjoyed the podcast and I think this is a great opportunity for people to have a lot more power in the market. Attention coaches, ensure your contract is fair and legal in every play. Contact Jill Baxter, sports attorney today for a thorough review of your agreement. Don't let illegal clauses sideline your career. Call Jill Baxter now and get back in the game with confidence. My cell is 559-250-0151 and my email is jillbaxter at me.com. Thank you for listening to this episode of Representation Without Taxation. Simply stated, I am always and forever about three things, protection, advocacy, and trust. To learn more about my fair fee structure, please visit my website at jillmcbridebaxter.com. If what we are talking about strikes a nerve, please subscribe and definitely share it. Until next time, it doesn't matter what the plan is, as long as you have one.